This is for the YouTube. Let me redo the intro. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Star Citizen Live Audio Team q and I'm Disco, and I'm doing this twice because I forgot to start the recording. But the YouTube people will never know. Uh, if you've never seen Star Citizen Live before, it's where we take about an hour out of the end of our week, and we hang out with uh, some of our developers. Uh, this week, uh, for their first time in 2022, uh, the uh, members of the CIG audio team out of, uh, out of Manchester. How you doing, everybody? Hello. I don't usually have an even number of people to fill the screen. Uh, we, we, we've, we've got Jack. Say hi, Jack. Hello. Uh, uh, Graham. Say hi, Graham. Hello. And uh, Brizolo. Hi. You can't see it, but his team's thing. Never mind. Um, so, <sighs> I'm not in my normal hour, so I'm a bit off. What are we doing we today? Wait. What are we doing today? Let's introduce the members of the team and see what you do for the team. Let's start with you, Graham. Who are you and what do you do for Star Citizen? Uh, I'm Graham Philipson and I'm the lead audio programmer of Star Citizen and Squadron 42. What's the lead audio programmer do? Um, so mostly programming, but also telling other people what to program too. Uh, <laughs> so all the stuff that needs to be programmed gets programmed. At hey. least that's how it's supposed to work. Hey, program that. Okay. Program uh, this for me now. No, it's much more kind of. Uh, do you mind programming this for me? Uh, get the thanks. Okay. Uh, Jack with the flickering webcam, which just started. Uh, who are you, and what do you do for Star Citizen? Hey, yeah. So I'm Jack. Um, I'm a sound designer on the project, <laughs> and that is what I do. But but for somebody who doesn't know what a sound designer does, what 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 does a sound designer do? Yeah, so um, we're responsible for so authoring the sounds themselves. So that could be designing weapon sounds or spaceship sounds or anything like that. Um, so that's one half of the job. And then the other half of it would actually be implementing the audio and getting it to work in the game. So it interacts um, live with the player input. So you're responsible for the way that a, a big gun goes. Exactly, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, 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 Bob, who are you and what do you do for Star Citizen? I get a recording of that though. <laughs> oh, there, you're, you're not. You're not going to be able. You're not, dude. Once, once we're in the same office, you're not going to be able to stop me. I'm going to be in there. Like I still no. want to do this. I still want to do the April Fool's artisanal sounds thing, where it just replaces all the sounds of the weapons and the ships and everything oh, that, with just my great. voice. <laughs> I'm well, sure we can arrange that. Yeah. What do you do for Star Citizen, Bob? I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I'm Bob Rosolo. Uh, I'm dialogue lead and um, dialogue lead. Well, that's uh, yeah. Just work with all the dialogues, all the character audio, all the uh, um, background audio uh, for dialogue um, that uh, makes the full dialogue landscape. We, um, you know, go record them, make them sound nice, and and as uh, Jack mentioned about implementation, getting it to work well in, in, in the game. Can you tell me why my voice sounds like this? Y <laughs> that's a nice reverb you got there i wasn't sure if you were going to hear it over the over the stream right no, it actually worked that's cool oh, cool. all <laughs> right so uh for this hour we're, we're, we're doing an open-ended q a with members of of the audio team remember that uh, uh the audio team is much bigger than just the three you see here so so if the particular member of the team that you know, has the particular answer for your particular question uh isn't here uh we may not be able to you know answer every single query but we got a nice little uh, diverse group of designers and, and programmer and whatever the heck bob does so so we're, we're going to jump right in you can submit your questions in the Twitch chat now by posting your question with the word QUESTION in capital letters surrounded by brackets. And then uh, while that's, those questions are coming in, we will go to our thread that we put up earlier this week that uh, allowed people to submit their questions and then vote on which ones they wanted to see added most. Um, right off the bat, we're going to start with uh, the last time that we really saw uh, the audio team was at Digital Citizen Con last year where we introduced uh, Claudius. Uh, this brand new tool that's going to reshape the way that, I mean, frankly, everything everything is made for Star Citizen as far as audio wise. Um, how's that been coming along in the last almost year since we saw it? Um, yes, I'll take that since it's uh, my baby, I guess. Um, so we've been progressing steadily. Uh, what we showed back at CitizenCon was a tech demo. 
And as you know, sort of tech demos are not always sort of fully rounded, finished features. Um, so what we were showing was some of the design uh, decisions we've made about how Claudius was going to work. And uh, we demonstrated a little bit of that. But one of the big decisions that we made behind Claudius was that every single audio feature becomes systemic. And that's a huge undertaking. It means that we've got to go through every single game system that exists right down from the tiny little things like the, the jukebox all the way up to capital ships and everything in between, every single feature. And we have to implement those features in the tool, in Claudius, and in the uh, underlying SIG Audio engine that um, allows us to make all of those features available to designers uh, where they choose to put them. So it's a really big sort of uh, undertaking. We're, we're making really good progress on it and we're hopeful that um, it's only going to be a few more months before we can actually release something with Claudius active uh, inside the build. Um, that won't be where um, Claudius is actually sort of driving the whole audio of the game because that's the sort of the longer term goal is to replace every system. But things are progressing really well. We've got some really great features coming in. Um, I do hope that we can talk about it again in, a, in a, another video, maybe sort of, yeah, in a, a few months time or something. I'm not sure when it will be, but yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a lot of really good plans for it and we want it to be, um, a real sort of revelation for designers when it comes out. So we're not releasing it until it's ready to be used. So that's the big thing. That's it's still kind of, it's not under wraps as such, but it's just uh, it's still germinating. And and, and uh, uh, backers and watchers of the show are used to hearing the word release apply to things to to the moment when they get their hands on it. You're of course talking about a release internally to when folks Absolutely. like Jack, you know, over here get to get to use it. And uh, yes. like many of our uh, 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 the procedural or systemic tools, you know, it's not designed to take the work away from the designers and do the work for them, but just provide them more tools and more capabilities uh, in order to be more efficient and more successful in the creation of, of, of their content. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did entirely... really. Sorry, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say just really quickly to, to kind of, chime in it's, it's really about letting the creatives be creative i mean what what happens when you don't have a, a great tool set or, or a tool set that that that's uh, you know quite aged it it uh it's it, there's a lot of extra work that has to go into getting what you want out of it. And, it, and it's, it's a lot of time sink. It's, it's just a lot of faff. And so, you know, the sound designers, they have to spend a lot of time in that world when, you know, they it's, it would be much better for them to be doing more creative work. And so that's, that's really the whole meaning behind this is just to get the creatives to do more creative work. And, and that's, that's the, that's the big key. Yeah. The way I put it is it's uh, the whole design is workflow first. So we yeah. look, a good workflow and then we build all the infrastructure behind it that allows it to, to happen uh as members of the audio team commander deckard would like to know when will server meshing be done <laughs> that's an interesting uh, question to ask the audio team <laughs> uh uh, here's one that comes, I, I, I'm pretty sure we have to go back to the tape, but I'm pretty sure this question has come up every single time you guys have been on SCL. Will we get sonic booms? That's a slightly different question to what we've been asked in the past. I think um, people quite often ask the question about speed of sound, and we talk about why it's kind of not something that, uh, mostly for gameplay reasons, for uh, player response times and things like this, we, we choose not to implement it and it's really a gameplay decision um but sonic boom specifically i mean there's no reason why we couldn't do that we could uh, we can allow sonic booms we can play them at the correct sort of uh, speeds and dependent on atmospheric pressure and things like this and you know um, yeah we could absolutely implement that but what we would probably not do with it is respect the speed of sound distance from the sonic boom to the, the listening device Mm -hmm. yeah and why not uh, again mostly because um, we need to make the same decision across the whole game so that everything knits together nicely and for gameplay reasons that decision is not to have speed of sound delays uh, I'm not ruling it out entirely you know, it's, it's, it's not impossible to uh, to implement but it, it is much more of a gameplay decision because it affects so many aspects of gameplay yeah it's worth remembering that there are many 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 aspects of star citizen but they're not all 
uh, it, it, it's it's you know some things that are that are in uh, some games are, are made possible because those games specialize in certain you know specific aspects of the sci-fi or the space going experience and what on and Star Citizen aims to create a a, a sandbox uh, that as many people with as many different desires and drives and attitudes can play in at once so the the I'll I'll put our feature set up against anybody's but at the mm. same time there w there won't be every single little thing that you see in every other game. Uh Oh, here's here 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 here's some fire. Here, here here's some here here here's some uh uh here's some feedback. Uh when in combat, it feels like there's a lack of sound or direction of where the shots are hit and the direction they come from and how it affects my ship. Are there planned improvements to the immersion of sound effects to better help combat situations? I'm back I can answer this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. You got it? <laughs> cool. That's cool. You go, Jack. I'll, I'll add any additional um, info at the end. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, so it's definitely something we want to look into um, for sure. Um, it's probably something that um, when propagation comes online, that um, it's likely to become easier at that point. Um, but yeah, that's still tech Graham's working on, so you could probably take over from that. <laughs> it is an interesting question, actually, because although the propagation tech will uh, improve understanding of direction in, in some situations, it can also make it more difficult in others because uh, it if you're in ship combat and you're in uh, first person, so your view is within the ship, a lot of what you might hear may be resonance from the outside of the ship, which is a little bit less easy to look at. Um, so maybe we need to be offering options there. Uh, and it's all stuff that we look into once we have a fully working propagation system. But I would expect that kind of, uh, that, that sound to propagate partially directly, but also um, there'll be a lot of diffusion around it as well. And we've been talking about the audio propagation for uh, for, for some time now, and uh, obviously uh, you, you mentioned it, it get it can often it will get affected by things like atmosphere and pressure and stuff like that. Uh, the next question uh, says: Are there any plans for players to immediately hear when they are entering a room the difference between vacuum or atmosphere due to how the sounds are propagated through the suit? Yeah. So there are a few aspects that are necessary to uh, be completed, aspects of tech, the tech uh, that need to be complete before that can actually happen. Um, right now, the audio system fully supports the pressure within any space. And if the space is depressurizing, that information is passed on to the audio system and it's available to sound designers to express that through their sounds. And we do do that. Um, you can, uh, in certain circumstances, depressurize some of our ships and you can be sort of firing a weapon inside it and you can hear the difference as it depressurizes. Um, but uh, that system isn't fully operational. There's a lot of work that needs to be done on the room system that, uh, yeah. to allow true sort of transfer of pressure and balance of pressurization across multiple rooms and atmospheres, planetary atmosphere and all these kinds of things. So um, that's work that I'm involved in, in in conjunction with um, other teams, and uh, we are progressing. So yes, the short answer is yes. I could have just said yes, and we do plan to support that. Yeah, there's no way we fill up the hour if you just say yes. No, that's true. <laughs> uh, oh, here's another old favorite. Uh, any plans to support surround sound? 5171, Dolby, Atmos. As far as I can tell, Star Citizen currently uses upmix stereo, leaving the center channel of a 5-1 setup mostly silent. Uh, and the surround speakers mirror the front speakers, which makes the soundscape just stereo instead of actual surround. Yeah. What the hell? So this man? was an interesting question because um I guess for the to a large extent we've all been working from home on headphones and uh, everything sounds as it should, right? Because we've got a left and a right, and that's all you need because you've only got two ears. If you're on that side of the argument, which we're not, obviously. So um, surround is fully supported by both our engine and um, the Wise engine that we use, the middleware that we use, um, and I think. We will have to investigate why this user is experiencing what they're experiencing because we do fully support 5.1 or 7.1 as output modes in WISE. And it may just be there's some sort of setup issue there. Um, 
but it's definitely something that's not so easy for us to check when we're mostly at home on headphones. So um, yeah, we can uh, we can we will dig into that one because uh, it came as a little surprise to hear that question. Yep. Uh, there are a couple of folks in the live chat who are confirming it's their experience as well. So that is very good to know, and we will um, treat that one as critical. Uh, it'll be exciting to get back into your. Yeah, your, your 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 new audio spaces and the new uh the new offices. Yeah, the new building. I was actually kind of kind of touch on that too. I mean, that's I, even the space that I'm here in in Freedom House. I mean, the, these the, the room here is is too small for a five point one. Um, and most of our spaces here are. We do have the uh, you know Apollo, and we're able to do five point one in there. Um, but as as Graham says, it's still a lot of us are still you know working from home. So, but the the new office, you know, each of our uh, pods will be 5.1 and the uh the the new mix space there is going to be a, a flagship 7.1 uh uh you know um at most still the atmos and it's going to be a, a fantastic room to do to do proper mixing in and to you know i mean part of the thing too is authoring content in in the 5.1 i mean we, we don't have the the tools at the moment to to really author that content as well in that kind of sense so it's it, there's a lot of it that's just really for for us as designers to to get in there and be able to have proper space and proper tools to to really make that 5.1 experience shine and and as as graham also said debugging and testing you know so all right uh let's see here's another old chestnut in-game radio that's all it says in-game radio question question mark <laughs> uh, uh, currently yeah, no. that'd be super cool i mean are we talking like real songs from now or made up songs from the future yeah <laughs> or what? i'm yeah. not too sure yeah, they're, they're, talk shows. Oh, go ahead. No, oh, go ahead. Talk shows. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, this, this question comes up uh, uh, quite frequently. Uh, there are a number of ways to to do this kind of thing. You know, whether whether it's you know uh, the the GTA style where we license a bunch of music and curate it. You know, on on ra on individual radio stations, just let people tune in uh, and play to that. Uh, whether we contract out with folks and create an entirely original selection of 30th century rock songs or whatnot to, to fill the thing. Or what a lot of people tend to ask is the ability to broadcast their own uh, uh, ra radio. And then that ends up, you know, opening up a whole nother can of worms uh, with, with, with uh, between legal and content rights. I'm sure most people who are watching on Twitch right now are no stranger to the, to the Twitch uh, situation with the RIAA and playing music. If, if I mean, if you had an in-game radio station that you could run, the whole purpose of it was that you would want other people to hear it. So yeah. if you could, if you were playing Star Citizen and then you turned a corner and then you heard somebody else's radio station playing a song that the RIAA is currently looking out for on Twitch and you were streaming at the time, you get your channel banned because, you know, this person over here was, was streaming. There are lots of lots of considerations for that kind of stuff it's not a hard no it's not a hard no the the, you know, the situation is always changing and evolving and stuff like that and there's there's all manner of new tech solutions that that, that come up we we do have we do have uh old backers will remember the jukebox in the in the player hangers uh that, let, that lets you play your own mp3s in the hangar and it radiated through their own personal hangar and stuff so so it's not to say that there's not some middle ground to uh, to be found. But. I can at least say that from, from narrative's point of view, from, from Dave Haddock, he is definitely been out there interested in, in, uh, you know, having lore and having actual, you know, musicians and music in fiction in, in star citizen. So mm -hmm. we do, we do expect to have, you know, that music in, in there, whether we'll have enough or how, how long would it take to get enough to kind of warrant a full on, uh, in fiction radio station. We'll, we'll see. Right. But, but at least, you know, there, there will be expectations of having more in fiction music. So, uh, and, and artists and, and that are actually part of the universe rather than just us uh, composing what we think 30th century, uh, music would be. <laughs> as, as we all know, in the future, music is all generated by AI anyway. So um, I think we just need to, you know, we just create some AI, we just generate hundreds of hours of the, the, the world's music. greatest DJ in the 30th century is DJ Dali. And he's, he's, <laughs> he's moved from image generation to just straight music generation based on a, uh, a sentence string. And it is terrible. Can you imagine uh, the horrors? <laughs> it is terrible. Um, but I, uh, 
it, it, it just a uh, in case the answer sounds like a like like a no and folks get uh, you know disheartened. I will say that this comes up internally so often. Like like Bob just said, speaking on behalf of Dave Haddock and stuff. Uh, I have to imagine based on how long I've been here and the people that I work with, that something will happen at some point. Like we, it's a, just another diegetic, a very, a, a, a very immersion building aspect of this universe we're trying to build. So I can't tell you what form or shape it's going to end up uh, in ultimately, but there's too many people here who want something for something never to uh, materialize. Yeah, I really hope to get the opportunity to record some 30th century space rock as well. We'll just play that. Uh, we'll, we'll play that Big Benny's uh, uh, th uh, song that Ross Dragenza and I made yeah. just on loop, <laughs> over and over and over again, um, that you can hear on our YouTube channel if you dig far enough. Uh, uh, okay, is there a limit on how far we can hear sound effects? Distant gunfire and ship sounds are one of the most awesome things. Two of the most awesome things. Uh, yeah. So we try to scale sounds sort of based on real life values. Um, so that every sound in the game will have an attenuation on it, which determines the uh, distance, the total distance the sound can travel. And the further away you get from the source, um, it'll start tailored, tailored off in volume and um, filtered down as well. Um, so yeah, we're already doing that in the game. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think um, the, the suggestion in the question might be that they want to hear more of the distant stuff, and I think uh, we have some uh, plans in the tech involved in Sig Audio and Claudius that um, will allow us to be more responsive to situational differences, and you know, based on the context of the game, we might be in more distant space battles if there isn't a, a, a close-by space battle going on at the same time, I think, so um, yeah, it's all part of that design, so give us uh, plenty of time. And sometime we can make improvements in that area as well. In, in, in some cases, too, it is actually a bit of a different content, too. We, we have to you know, have different content for those different con contextual switches in, in some cases to, to really get it to shine properly and mix right and, and all those things. So it's, it's not just as simple as taking a gun sound and just that gun sound being that far away. You know, it, it could be, uh, as, as Graham said, you know, having the, the Claudius will really help us uh, with crowding and, and distancing and doing things in a much more uh, efficient manner as well. Um, here's another question that I think the answer is going to have to touch on some of that in in game radio stuff. Will we have a PA like system in our ships? <laughs> That, actually, I remembered that question last year. Uh, that is definitely something I personally feel pretty passionate about. Yes, yes, there will be. Yes, um, and we've actually made progress on that tech. So we last last time we spoke about it, we were starting to get it to the point where we had um, some of these dynamic events with these mission driven PAs uh, being broadcasted into multiple locations and, and off off of speaker arrays and and things like that. And that was uh, that was taking kind of the fundamental basics of how this would work, having a source being broadcasted across. Uh, to to multiple receivers and uh, since then with this last uh, you know with this last fleet, fleet week and uh, siege of Orson, uh we've uh, we've uh, uh, pushed that further and did some more robust work with it we, you know I mean there's still next steps after that would be to have a bit more finer detail on the types of PA and the, and the speaker arrays and, and and so we can have better detail between like a hallway PA versus a broom versus like the the, the bigger hangers and things like that you know uh, and and then next after that is to take it to to an actual ship you know we've been doing these mostly in locations and whatnot so now we need to take an, a ship as an example as a prototype and do it there um what would probably be the source would be the ship computer so we'll look at like warnings and crits that would you would want to send to the whole ship for for example right now when, when you get a ship computer response it's like warning crit like your ship's going to explode that's only going to the pilot in the pilot operating seat so we would like for that to actually like like this is su suggesting have a PA broadcast the ship uh, and tell the whole ship that you know you're about to blow up. Uh, but uh, uh, you know that's that's going to take that prototyping and then you know as you can probably imagine taking that one markup for that one ship and putting it across our whole fleet of ships. So that's going to be quite a, an undertaking. We'd like to do that the most efficient way as well. Um, but one step further is to take it so it's not just 
a, you know, the ship computer or any kind of system voice doing that is that to give the player interaction to actually speak into this PA and in, in a target a room, like for example, they, they've just rescued some guy and he's in their, their cargo bay. You can actually, you know, say I'm talking directly to cargo bay and say, Hey, welcome, welcome to my ship, you know, blah, blah. And have it come out in this PA speakers and, and, uh, um, that person like, Oh, cool. Thanks. You know, uh, and, and whatnot. So, you know, it, it's, uh, that kind of level of detail is really what we're after. And as you can see, it's going to take a few iterations yeah. of tech and steps to get there, but, uh, we're on our way and yeah. we've been making progress. And, and you're, you're pretty clear all you're pretty clear on that all the way up until you get to the parts where players can speak over it. At that point, you run into the same considerations in game radio has now in your radio, we broadcast, you know, server wide or whatever, but this is still the ability to sing and change your vir <laughs> virtual microphone to yes. an MP3 out. And and, that's, and, and, that's and true, blast huh? music over your spaceship and stuff. So, <laughs> so it, it's 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 just one of those things. Like I want to say, it, it's it's you've got a you uh, for folks who want it. You have a tremendous champion in, in Brizolo here. And yeah, and, and, we, we, we'll we'll have to see if it if it if it's something to be kind of more client or if it's that a person in your group or something and not yeah. like to the uh, to the full on server. But yeah, I, you're right though. He, that open mic can be received. At the I, I mean, it, it it happens to some extent in voice over IP too. So, I was just gonna say, so, I mean, so, it could, it's, it's, it's taking that already existing voice yeah, over IP and yeah, making it yeah. kind of in game and in world. So. Uh, I would hope that still works. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was... Well, when it, when it's loud enough for other people to hear it, anyway. What's the yeah. deal with that? Was that sorry? I said, what's the deal with that? How what's the deal with half, half, your question? half the time I see voice over IP, it's so low other people can't hear it. Like, oh. we need more volume control. That's we know, we know great. <laughs> yeah. So we um, we actually made some uh, some progress on this quite some time ago, and um, what we need is a new menu to be created where a player can go in and speak into their mic and they can monitor their level and then they can set their transmission level and uh, the audio tech for this exists we just need to work with other teams to get it um, working in the ui and in the, the menu and uh, we should be able to make improvements in that area um, there is no reason beyond that why anyone should be any quieter than anyone else because uh, they're all being put through the same setup Obviously, you have attenuations. So if you if you're not in a um, chat channel, a voice channel with somebody, then you're going to just hear them naturally. You have to be very close to them to hear that because uh, it becomes cacophonous very quickly if we uh, if we have to roll off on that kind of thing. And we have had those problems of you know, people communicating over VoIP and uh, having you know um, Backman turn or overdrive blasting out in the background, and that's all anyone can hear when you walk past that person. So yeah, it's all about balance, really. Central Park and Fall. Uh, while we're talking the voice communications, uh, any chance we get filters or uh, new variables, uh, what, what ways to alter or, or otherwise oh, yeah. distort? Yeah, I mean, we already do it essentially in uh, in from the NPC standpoint. I mean, if you go to like uh, was it the was it Laurelville or uh, anywhere you have that the security guards where they have mask on and and you can hear them through the mask, little like Darth Vadery kind of sounds. I mean, that that's essentially a a disguise filter that I've put on their voice as a runtime effect. So it's not something I've baked in there. They if they if they were to uh, remove their masks, they would you would hear them speak their normal voice. So. Um, uh, you know, it, it is something that that is already done. But again, it's it's one of those things where we have the tech, it's working. Now we need to have that player interaction and that player choice and be able to put it on the voice over IP so that we can have them use it and and, and do that as well. So it's just a, moving that uh, bar and extending it to uh, to players. And it, it is def definitely something I would like to do. And I also look into, to, you know, offering a lot, obviously, more more. Uh, um, uh, uh, variations and allowing people to kind of almost you know do work you know have, giving them enough play with it that so that they can kind of design and play and make their own disguise you know yeah tech wise i think you know this is a i'll keep talking about sigordio and claudius but the whole design of this is that we allow um the 
basically the design of audio up in this game to become more of a playground, more of a, sort of a, a place where designers can play around and make interesting things. And there's absolutely no reason why um, voice effects could be, you know, couldn't be one of these things that is uh, offered via the, the, the new audio engine once it comes online. So yeah, maybe one day we'll have lots of cheap people wandering around. Uh, and while we're on uh, voice chat, um, uh, in-game voice has several bugs that have persisted for years. After a while of playing, individual single-directed links drop out. So if A, B, and C are in a party, A stops hearing B, but B can still hear A, C can hear everybody, and it's progressive. So more and more links drop out as time goes by, and sometimes a player gets extremely low volume for no reason, even when talking over radio. Uh, anything you can, anything you can, you, 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 you any hope you, you, you can give the, the, the uh, there's, there's always hope, um, <laughs> to fix all these things you need, all you need are time and resources and determination. And, uh, we've certainly got the last one of those three. Um, but the big issue with, with VoIP is the amount of testing time, the amount of repro time it takes. And, you know, we've, we've spent days uh, attempting to reproduce these issues and either have no success or, you know, just have, they just kind of work or, you know, we've, uh, we've, or we've not been able to track down what is causing these issues. We do continue to look into it. And it is always on our plan to improve because um, we want it to be a 100% reliable system that people yeah. feel like they can go to and not need to fall back to um, other third-party chat applications and things like that. So, yes, absolutely, we, we do continue to look into it. And we've made, over the last year, we've made some huge stability improvements um, from what people are saying. It's not quite there yet, but uh, that's the problem is, you know, you fix the big issues and then you get to the smaller ones and the smaller ones and, you know, you get further, the deeper you go, the longer it takes to get to the point where you can even figure out what's happening before you can fix it. And the thing about the VoIP system and, and VoIP as a whole, is it's a hugely complex infrastructure that goes way beyond just um, recording some voice in game and passing it down to the game server and then propagating it to the players. It's like we have completely separate voice servers that are, uh, they don't even rely on you being on the same game server. So when server meshing comes online and your friends on a completely different server and they're transitioning between servers, this, this is all infrastructure we've built that allows that to be seamless and you can, you know, you can uh, still communicate when you're transitioning between different servers. So, um, we have all this complexity that was very forward thinking and you know some of this complexity is some is part of the reason why some of these bugs exist but it's the right thing to do because long term we ultimately end up with a system that that satisfies our future needs as well as our present ones as, as don steeler gaming says certainly <laughs> sounds like a tough problem <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Don't blame me. Blame Don Steeler. You chat. Uh, Bob, what are the Hi. plans to have more NPC background chatter or general hubbub in populated areas? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So the last couple uh, um, locations have really, I think we've done a, a, a much better job, I think. Uh, I mean, it started out, the, the first test cases of, of really improving this was uh, the cargo and refinery decks, uh, which were location uh, uh, generic. And uh, they, um, uh, it really had a, had a great positive, uh, uh, you know, addition to it, right? I mean, the whole, we knew that, but it was, uh, um, it was really kind of trying to dissect and, and adding, you know, we had, you know, the, the dialogue landscape has a foreground of, you know, actual AI interacting, you know, words coming out of the AI's mouth. And, and that, but then you have, you know, sight unseen, this middle ground that the chatter that they're kind of referring to that, uh, that we've really been focusing on. It doesn't have AI, it doesn't have any other stimuli other than that you're in a populated space and you want it to have that uh, uh, immersion and that, that feeling that there's life there when maybe there's not really anything actually triggering it. And that was a big thing that we did with these spaces. Um, the one last thing is, is the, the, base the very background um walla which is that indiscernible it's almost like oh, a wow. sound effect of of uh <laughs> of dialogue just kind of filling the space and we've we've added the you know uh, uh layers of that but it's still this static -y type thing that that's just for that these spaces and and uh we did this i think really well with uh orison where we went and picked out these densely populated areas that we knew that would 
pretty much usually have that type of population and it, we're able to add those chatters um, so that you had the dialogue even if the even if the AI wasn't there really you know actually acting and, and, and uh, uh, vocalizing and and we had the the, the walla in the background so it's, it's the, these layers kind of compounding together that gives you a dialogue landscape and a feeling of life um, but it's all still you know very uh, uh, us attacking these spaces and, and whatnot right um and we're actually we've taken this and orzen being a very good um uh, a full prototype of of doing that for a whole location we're now going back to uh, like lauraville and some of these other locations and really trying to uh fill them out as well so so we we've taken this in in and now now we're kind of um generating more and more and, and it's it's really helping we're, we've we've hit the hospitals with some some vignette type uh, chatter we want to do the the uh, um the the habs as well uh especially they're gonna find some cool stuff you like walking through the halls and hearing some weird stuff especially the more fun locations like grim hex you know get some cool stuff in there uh and pyro is going to be fun too coming up with a lot of that kind of outlaw uh, uh stuff that's actually where we're hoping to get a lot of the dialogue life uh out of there because we, we we won't have as much character content for such an, a new location right so it's going to be really uh the that middle ground of that um uh, of, of background will really help help with those spaces but our future we would really like to have more of these the, like a dynamic wallet system that can not not just you know say that this is a space that has population and so we should treat it as such but to to actually look at the populations and dynamic look because it's not just N npcs roaming around it's players and we want to you know make sure that that if if you stand in a room with a bunch of players that that actually also feels like a densely populated space and you don't know when that's going to happen it's going to be very dynamic and, and, and whatnot and it's going to have a mood it's going to have a uh, uh you know again the population and, and all those things so we want to in a, in a, you know a, a um the dynamic of uh, of the types of, of, of populations in there right so it's it's, it's and we'll take stems and we'll take a, a a lot of source of wallet and mix it appropriately to to have you feel like that's the space that you're in and 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 that's going to take a lot of content it's going to let, take a lot of tech and a lot of prototyping a lot of work on it but we we have almost started the process we're getting there we we have we have some big to be honest we have some big choices to make with the type of software that we want to use because part of part of the big thing that we want to do with creating so many assets is using a uh, uh, text to speech and uh, speech to speech and using these kind of tools to help bolster what recordings we already have and, and things like that and really to help us generate the right amount of content without having to go and record record and record and record a, a bunch of wall of sessions so so it's it's a uh, um we're looking at that tech right now and we have, we need to make, and it's quite a, you know, pretty substantial uh, decision to, uh, for, for monetary to, to make that kind of decision. So we need to do our homework. We need to do our research. We need to compare and weigh against and, and all those things. So we're, we're at that level at the moment where we're about to engage uh, with some good research. And then once we pick that, then we can really start to move on with, uh, with getting a, a proper wallet system in there um, wow. and, and, and one <laughs> and whatnot. So that's, I'm sorry, I kind of blabbered on there a bit. But, um, uh, as a follow-up yeah. to that, uh, we were talking about investigating softwares and text-to-speech and stuff. Uh, Shaney in the live chat asked, uh, have you been looking at AI-generated voices for like third-tier NPCs like the ATC? Uh, Google's latest AI voice tech sounds amazing, this person said. <laughs> Yes, I mean um, that, that that is definitely a, a very good point. We we can do that for for NPCs. I mean, mostly our our target has been really for like the system voices. Uh, uh, you know, like for I know there's a question down here on, on ship computer voices, so I don't make a save it for that. But but uh, you know, a lot of system voices that are especially having a lot of incremental game design and so it's like we can't you know it's when we want to go record and, and cast an uh, you know an actor and get them in it's we have an uh, you know amount of amount of you know lines for them everything and we with the monitor and make it make sense go in there get get a much enough amount of content and then but you know some at some point later you'll want to have this 
new gameplay feature and and that that thing only has five lines and you're like okay well you now need to call this actor up to have them come back in and record five lines or or if it's a, you know work from home kind of studio whatever it is it's still that's that's they, they have you know basic minimum fees for sessions and it's just yeah. not financially viable so so we we especially just even for our iterative game development want to look at these ai uh creating voices and whatnot but we also would like to be able to still pick and choose our talent, pick and choose the people we want to have in our game. And so we, we, we're looking at ways to be able to create our own voice packs and, and, and say, uh, actor, so-and-so person, you're going to be the voice of this ship and we're going to go capture your essence and be able to create a voice from you that we can then drive with our, our text-to-speech or speech-to-speech is another thing that, that we've been looking into too, where you, uh, someone can actually, uh, um, you know, take we can take a, a voice actor and and you know a, a staff or, or anybody else can can read off those lines in the way we like but it'll sound like that that person that we, we captured um and it's another way to to bolster content without having to 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 you know hire talent for just five lines a piece but we you know obviously we still pay them these proper you know buyouts and proper licenses for their for their uh you know their voice it's not you know we 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 do make sure that the talent are treated well and that we 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 do the all the right legal things with that and it and it, it has been adapting in, in the industry i mean we're not the only ones to kind of consider that right the film film is also looking at ways to, to, to do better adr so you don't you know you can you have a project to film and you know there's there's requirements to say oh, you can only uh, adr 10 percent with these speech to speech things and and then you know you're able to uh, uh bolster it without having the the, the guy had to come in for five lines or something, you know, uh, and, and, that, and that, that's, that's, that's benefit. But, but we, we obviously are, are very keen on that. And, you know, and we want to, we want to push forward with these, these, uh, um, these AI or these, you know, these uh, 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 speech or text to speech creating voices and, and really, you know, have a lot more content to work with <laughs> there are there are technical issues that need to be overcome though because i know um, some of these ai generated uh speech samples do sound amazing but um, a lot of that uh, ai is trained on natural language and is trained on um, known language and a lot of our language in lore isn't known and is a little bit tricky for some of these things and it's really important that we make sure we don't end up in uncanny valley land because i think when these ai generations get something wrong you can really hear that it's uh, it's not a person speaking so yeah it's a lot of research uh last question from the chat for a bit we'll go back to the thread uh are you guys bringing tessa bannister back Ah, I love Tessa Bannister. Ah, you know the the uh, the actor um, that or actress or uh, uh, actor actress uh, that, that that plays that role. She she's she's phenomenal. She's she's really sweet. And and it was it was great to get her back in last time we had her. And I I'm I'm sure we'll we'll have her in again. I I, I can only imagine that she's being such a fan favorite and and a staff favorite. We we love working with her. So I I would sure hope so. <laughs> Uh, you're not going to be able to hear this. My system's stuck processing an unknown reading. But I'd love to be able to provide entire, more information on my report than just like five recorded, question marks just in a row. Available. Think you could take a look <laughs> nice. at what's at this location? I'm playing on stream right my now. My system's stuck <laughs> processing an unknown reading. <laughs> I'd love to be able to provide more information we on my report than just like yeah. five question well, I, marks I, I in, in a row. <laughs> Think you could take a look at what's at this location? My system's stuck <laughs> processing an unknown reading. Oh my god! Okay, she keep going. All right, that was enough. Um, all right, let's get back. We got about fifteen minutes left. Uh, let's get let, let's let's do some some so, some rapid fire stuff here as we get through as many of these as possible. Um, are there plans to make components sound off when they are having issues performing correctly to help engineers identify non critically damaged or faulty components quicker? Uh, yes, it's something we definitely want to look into. It should be fairly simple in practice. Um, we'll just need to assign a sound to each component and then tie that into a value to say how much health, health it has. Um, so to echo what Graham said earlier, it's just a case of time and resources. But yeah, it's something we'd absolutely like to do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, since audio in the void is computer interpreted, uh, if, 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 if we EMP an area, will the sound in spacesuits in that area stop getting sound from the outside? 
that's the question for gameplay and gameplay design. But uh, we will offer the tech from the OEO team to uh, allow that if the game design wants it. Would like it. <laughs> I'd love it. I'd love it. To yeah, yeah. I'd love to be able to just hear the sounds from within the suit if everything, you know, if the suit is dead. Uh, as a as a follow up to that, besides an EMP potentially disabling it, uh, any consideration or discussion about simply turning off the audio simulation uh, willingly so that people can play in eerie, spooky, hard mode. Um, yeah, I think that'd be an amazing thing to do as well. And I think maybe we can offer, again, it's a gameplay question, but there could be some penalty for having your um, audio simulation switched on. It could be that you may light up somebody's radar if you if you have this thing switched on. So if you want to be stealthy, you've got to accept no sounds or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, how come several soundscapes are gone? Area 18 tram, for example. It used to beep and buzz. Hmm. Um, sounds like a bug, so something we'll look into. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. It, it's it's kind of key to, to note that that uh, uh, you know certain overarching implementations of systems and things like that do change over time, and and quite often what happens is they they might something else might happen inexplicably, and it will go unnoticed because it was working before. Uh, and, and and it's always hard to kind of catch those things in game development. It really is. It, it takes, it, you know, that's, that's, that's really honestly why we have like, you know, QA and, 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 you know, uh, uh, fans, you know, or, or, you know, community sharing these type of things happening. Cause it, it really helps us catch those kind of things when, 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 uh, when it's, we've done it and it worked and, how do we know when it breaks? Yeah. <laughs> it's also it's also why we we've, we've got quite a big push going on internally for automatic testing. So one of the things we're aiming for is uh, knowing what the response to a particular gameplay situation should be from the audio system and confirming that it is still the case from build to build. Yeah. Uh, but we're nowhere near um, ready with that yet. So even one day we'll have a system that can pick these things up uh, yeah. when, before they go out. When one system is developed, when one system and another system are developed in two separate branches. And then they get together for the first time in game dev. That's where bugs are born. And that's been the talk. Um, that's why I don't have children. Oh, that, that I know of. Um, why are shutdown sounds for your ship so different from engine sounds? It's not connected to the engine sound at all, but a completely different sound effect. Um, once again, uh, a risk of echoing um, or repeating what I've already said, it's sort of a time and resources thing. Um, just due to the amount of ships we're working on, uh, we sort of have a system uh, set up already that works. Um, but yeah, um, looking into tying up the, the startup and shutdown sounds um, to the engine is something we need to look into and it will take a lot of time. Um, so yeah, it's something hopefully for the future. I think another thing is, you know, some of the tech we're working on is going to make it easier for you guys yeah. to, uh, to hook yeah. into uh, the, the state of the ship at the point where it shuts down. So, yeah. uh, we, We've mentioned propagation a few times. Uh, does that mean the doors and such will block sound? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the propagation system has been uh, long in development, and that's because of the amount of rework and the bug that's had to go on to um, to support it fully, reworking the room system and uh, creating the mapping for that room system and things like this. And it, it's in progress now. I have working demos, and um, it's uh, one of the main things that it does from an audio perspective is respect when doors are opened and closed. It also respects... Um, Angle, uh, angles of travel of sounds, so you can kind of know uh, you can affect the way a sound sounds because of how many times you had to turn around a corner to get to your ears, and you know we can kind of express a lot more about where the sounds are propagating from and to uh, and, and via um, through this system. So yeah, doors absolutely spoiler. Jared, show the working demos of what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I have working demos and I haven't shown anyone. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have I don't have any working demos. <laughs> We've had the same ship computer voices for a variety for the various manufacturers for like twenty eight years now. <laughs> uh, I might be embellishing for my own personal uh, exhaustion. Are there plans to rec or to re record new lines for the ships to better fit the current and future mechanics Star Citizen is moving towards? Please, to God, say yes. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I, I kind of briefly touched on it uh, with that other question talking about the, uh, uh, the, the AI and, and having a, um, uh, text to speech generating the voices and whatnot and that and that's a big proponent in this in this redesign we we have it on the plate to completely overhaul and completely redesign the ship computer voices and it really starts with that tech and getting buying buying into that tech and figuring out which one we're going to use from there we we not only do i mean though not only are we trying to improve the content that we're using but we also want to improve its role in 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 it and, and everything and one of the things that's really important to us is unifying the warning and crit package uh, uh across all manufacturers and the 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 the, the the dialogue that's used there, the um, the visual representation, the sound effects representation, all those three things kind of come together to really put together a complete experience for for how, how you would experience a warning and a crit and how they should operate and how, how you would expect them to to function. And, and a lot of it, we really want to look toward, you know, the, the military and actual jet fighter jets and how, how they, you know, there, there's a lot of science that goes into these kind of warnings and, and alerts. And, and we, we'd like to, you know, treat it a bit more uh, real world with that and to get to get in, to involved in it with a bit more i mean still rule of cool but but uh, uh you know we that is a, a huge you know a passion project for us to to really achieve a much better ship computer in that kind of sense and that and that's just one role you know re, definitely fixing and unifying that specific experience but you know we would like to look at the you know um having a better uh, a ship computer that that uh, uh uh, acknowledges the essence of the manufacturer or the luxury or the the military or the uh, the uh, utilitarian you know we we want to have uh, uh, you know it, it have that heart um and, uh, and to really share that a, a bit better um but also one one extra thing too is that I personally would like to have some more ship computer, roles relating to gameplay loops you know I, I feel like especially it'd be great to have uh, um a ship computer based for exploration that, that can really kind of touch on on the, the the systems and give you more information and, and thoughts and the dangers and lurkings and all these things about about your exploration or maybe a ship computer voice that's more detailed to combat to give you a an idea like oh you know a uh, danger will robinson like that's that you're gonna you're heading into a dangerous uh, uh, system uh, or you're you're outnumbered uh, there's a lot of ships that approaching and it's to a point where you know we sense that that you're you're not going to be able to to, to 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 succeed give the player a challenge uh but but just you know that that the, these these ideas are are in our heads the, they we were really trying to put them down to paper and uh it's really obviously like i said it really takes getting the right tech first um but all these things are on the table um and uh none of them have been fully signed off yet but it's really what we're seeing we're, what we're clearly seeing is that the ship computer currently does not fulfill the role that we would like to see it and so very much we'll be uh, addressing this um as we sort out that tech i've always wanted there to be optional you know swap outs and stuff too like some that are more expensive than others and some that are really cheap like we missed our opportunity to get gilbert godfrey as like the entry, <laughs> as like the entry level drake like Drake combat assist turned on <laughs> like major yeah. torque imbalance. What does this mean? <laughs> I don't know what this means. It's on the screen. There's That's enough recordings of him, Jared, to resurrect him. Believe me. Oh, well, they got apparently Alexa can do that now. So uh, you can program Alexa to, re to speak in the voice of a dead loved one now. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. It, well, we, we, maybe. Never mind. We're, 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 going in, we're going into Black Mirror stuff now. Keep so, and, and yes, and yes, that was a terrible Gilbert Gottfried impersonation. Uh, I've never attempted one in my life before, and I sh I wish that had still been the case in this moment. Um, voice control. Bob, ah, I, I, I know this is another one that you're big on. We're going to turn this yeah, into the Brazola show. Voice control, yeah, yeah. things like voice attack, but you know, in game, it integrated, our own yeah. kind of thing. What are your thoughts? Oh, oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, actually, I do. Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember. This was like a quite a few years ago, but I thought there actually already exist a couple third party systems that third party. That you, yeah, yeah, you can do do for uh, do for our ship. So it, obviously, that the tech is there. Um, it's just 
doing that tech internally for ourselves. That's that's another in, uh, a big undertaking. Uh, but I, I would like to go one step further. I mean, one one of the big things that I really would like to see with uh, with voice is that that your voice. Um, you know, uh, interacts with the NPCs, like, you know, uh, not only in your ship and whatnot, but if you're on the ground and you're walking through a location, you can walk up to an NPC and say hi, and then they will say hi back to you because you registered that you greeted them and that you they can greet you back. Or simply just being able to, you know, you have the inner voice, you know, uh, responses. And instead of going there and having to click on one, you can just say one of the responses and the NPC will acknowledge that. How cool would that be? That that That's like my passion. I, I would like for, for some something like that at some at some point but uh it is a a quite a big undertaking for the tech that we we would need in there and um as you can see uh graham has quite a few uh uh, big things on his plate already with claudius and and propagation and whatnot so uh we'll yeah it would be some way down the list but you know it's like climbing a mountain isn't it yeah we just carry on at some point we reach the peak and maybe the peak is having (laughs) ai that understands you're speaking and understands what you're trying to express i refuse to use any of those things i don't i'm I'm a technology person but i don't like talking into my crap (laughs) i just just don't uh all right we got five minutes uh let's see how many more we can squeeze in is binaural audio then considered we were talking about surround what about about this um yeah so we have internally tried out a few different hrtfs uh, we haven't settled on exactly what we want for our game yet and um, i think what we really want to do is um get back into the get into the new studio um get some solid work done on how the game sounds in surround and i think that is the basis for coming up with a, a decent binaural slash HRTF solution is, is knowing that what it's trying to express is good in the first place. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think we, uh, we, we've got some work to do in the department for sure. Uh, but it, it's all part of our uh, research and it is ongoing. Okay. Uh, when the ship was badly damaged, the interior lights change. Will the audio team consider providing some alarms and ambient sound to match the damage status? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, good. No, no, I'm sorry, Jack. Oh. I, I was just like, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah um, we already have some stuff in place. Um, so like Steam will come out and Sparks and things like that. We have audio support for that. But yeah, absolutely. We should definitely look into things like alarms and things like that. That's something we really love to do. We, we have to tread carefully with alarms because um, sounds that become annoying become annoying to use a tautology. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> uh can we please have five minutes of silence between songs no pedro all the time pedro who wrote this question and how did i let it get into my list i suppose some people don't want music going on all the time maybe not uh, yeah, I'm sure you can look into that. I'm sure you know. I mean, uh, at, at, at a little breath. I think you know it's quite often the breaths uh, and silence in between do, do, is important. I would have to say. I think uh, transitional and just giving giving the uh, listener a break. I think that's valuable. It's it's it's, it's a warranted uh, request. Although we do love our music, um, but uh, no, you know, and um, yeah. I mean, there, there's our, there are locations, too, that we're considering to have a bit more ambient stuff, too, you know, where it's not full on melodies and whatnot. You can give yourself a break there as well. You go to Pyro or something. <laughs> uh, are there plans for any of the abundance of cockpit switches to blast Fortunate Sun over the ship's PA? No, we're not. We already that's done. <laughs> I need to look closer at these questions before we do the show. We, we can create an AI generated uh, mimic of Fortunate Son. Dolly, do, no, Dolly, play me Fortunate Son. Um, uh, will there be an echo in large ship interiors, uh, like the merchantman's giant cargo hall? I like how the, like not a cargo hold, a cargo hall. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were actually talking about this just last week about how uh, one of the big things that we uh, we need is a better early reflection system, and that is what we're talking about here. Cargo ball is like you know, has the sound reflect off um, big square distant walls. Um, so we are actively researching how we're going to implement this. But as with everything, Star Citizen, it needs to work in every possible gameplay situation, in every scenario, in every planet, every 
bit of uh, geometry and yeah that's always the challenge we face uh last two questions uh which audio element of the project have you found to be the most challenging to implement so far um in a way, uh, a lot of it can be quite challenging just due to the multitude of tools we have. Um, so this is something Claudius is really going to help with where we sort of centralize all of that. But at the minute, um, an audio designer can be jumping between maybe three or four different programs um, to get a sound working. So um, that's one of the harder bits of it. Um, you don't have to yeah, say Claudius that just because that Graham's out. here, Jack. You can, you can be honest. <laughs> He's just trying to persuade me to uh, release it more quickly yeah, sorry <laughs> how about you bob <laughs> um no i i definitely I, I would like to to relate with uh, jack i mean especially for dialogue too it's it's uh, it's going to actually be a little harder because uh, unfortunately claudius well it will help with a lot of the non-character improvements uh, uh i'll be honest but but still character dialogue does come from ai and it does come from subsumption and and uh you know a lot of that is a, is a bit out of our our hands at the moment so um getting more more support and getting more uh, uh people from the dialogue team involved in that will really help us but but yeah sadly a, lo a lot of uh, dialogue is kind of out of our hands of how it triggers because it's triggered by the ai, AI um uh, and and with subsumption and things like that so it's it's just getting into that black box for our department to to really help with it and to uh to expand on it and that that just takes more more people so if you want to join the dialogue team. <laughs> uh, we're always hiring. Cloudbearingames.com yeah. slash jobs. And, um, <laughs> well, brand new facility to work in. So, uh, And then last and perhaps the most important question we're going to answer here today. Will we ever be able to honk a horn on our spaceships? Yes. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I think well, draw no, a line in the sand, not? make it happen, uh, Graham. Yeah, you know, if yeah, if you want to do this, you know, we can get into arguments about whether you should hear this horn in space or whether you need to be in atmosphere to hear it <laughs> and all these kinds of things. But oh. yeah, let's just say yes for now. And an entire new subcomponent system of different horn types. Uh j just put it all on John Crew and his team. I'm sure they're up for it. Uh, 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 there, there will be a day when I can roll around in my buccaneer and blast La Cucaracha just by. There was someone on my street that, that would uh, have, have a honk, and it, would, it was the Godfather. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, I'm sure the ship team would have no trouble adding a whole new component to every single spaceship mm -hmm. from now on. I'm committing them to it with the power that I don't have. All right, everybody, uh, that's it. Thanks for um, thanks for uh, 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 joining us here on Star Citizen Live, uh, the our team Q and A. Uh, thanks to Jared. The stream just got demonetized. We don't demonetize. We don't monetize our streams. They're all demonetized. We do this for the people. Uh, ISC is on hiatus. Uh, ISC will be back uh, July twenty eighth. If I'm not mistaken, uh, be sure to check out yesterday's episode uh, that covered a whole host of things uh, coming to Alpha 3172, uh, as well as uh, some stuff, uh, uh, you know, some stuff that was intentionally uh, left out. Uh, but you're going to want to, you know, you can check out uh, 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 the, the Spectrum and Twitter. Folks have, have, have found some of the things that we we didn't quite hint at. There's even more uh, that have not been discovered uh, just yet. Uh, don't forget that the Battle of the Bricks uh, charity live stream where the community teams from EVE and Star Citizen come together uh, to raise money for Extra Life, that is happening on July 22nd. Um, so be sure to check that out. Um, there's also a array of, of, uh, of, of dynamic events that have returned uh, to pass the time until 3.17.2 is out. Uh, Jump Town and Nine Tails. Uh, Adventure. That doesn't sound right. Nine tails <laughs> lockdown. Nine tails lockdown. 
if I were a professional, I'd have written all this out before. But... <laughs> um, uh, that's going on right now. You can check out the robertspaceindustries.com website to see the schedule of when, when, when those are running. And, uh, and yes, if you haven't heard, uh, there is a wipe coming with 317.2. Uh, to deal with you know the various AUEC and ship exploits that have, that have happened over the last uh, patch or two, so this is your chance to jump into Jump Town and Nine Tails and just go hog wild because uh, <laughs> you, no fear of losing anything. I want to get in there and have the craziest, wildest adventure uh, possible because why not? Why why not? <laughs> Uh, so for that's the everything that's it and then uh, we'll be right back here with Star Citizen Live next week uh, I don't actually remember who's on the show I can remember everybody else's stuff but I don't remember my own I'm in a good place right now <laughs> uh, that's that's uh, Jack that was Graham that was Brizolo uh, thank you for joining us here with the Audio QA team uh, take care everybody uh, 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 be safe and um have fun in the verse. Right. Where's my button? There it is. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hold on. Let me do one more. Uh, do, do, do more, Tessa. Not to sound mysterious or anything, but I'm picking up some really weird pings on my scanners. I don't know if you'd want to check it out and tell me what the hell it is. I would myself, but you know, I can't leave. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so, it's only been eight years. You'd think I'd be better at this, but no. 